Hello guys, Nigel here with you again, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Been a while I know, but here we are back now with the 48 scale Lancaster. I have done a little bit of work on it off camera. My cold is finally going, and my eyesight is getting back to normal and everything. Um, nothing wrong with me, I have just literally had a cold, and as everybody seems to have it. Uh, I haven't got the dreaded big one. Um, but yeah, so my eyes have been streaming, so I haven't been able to do anything. I've been playing around with that 30 second scale B17 with the junky bits of sanding and stuff so working on this with the fiddly bits has been a bit of a no-no so here we are back I know it's been I think the last video went out on the 11th of November today is the 28th so you know it's nearly three weeks anyway um here we are back with it and as you can see I've got the fuselage all taped together and the glue's drying and everything no it's not I've just got it taped together just because I've got the interior in there um you can see in here I've got the engineer's panel in that side and we've got the engineer's seat there glued in and I've just got the I've got it all in the fuselage really just to sort of make sure the seat's in the right place if I'd have realized I wouldn't have glued it in because it actually sticks up there and um, it's likely to get knocked off until we've got the canopy on so I'll probably have to put some tape over it or something but um, in our little box over here as you can see I've got the little photo etch bits and pieces done here's the instrument panel with the levers and everything it's all just been sort of glued together. There's no touch that's been done, but I don't think you can even see those levers. Um, it's not very nice. I'll be honest with you. If I was to build another one of these, I wouldn't bother with this headard cockpit set because one, the rudder pedals are horrible. As we know, we saw that back in, I think that was part one, wasn't it? They're horrible. Um, and also if you look at the instrument panel, you can catch it in the light there. You can see that what you've basically got is a, a backing piece with the dials on and then they put some gloss varnish on there to give you the effect of having glass on there. And then you put the front face over that and you then the, the parts show through the holes. But as you can see, they've got a really convex face on them. So they're like great big domes in there rather than rather than a nice flat glass. So, you know, if I were you, I'd, I'd get the look perhaps or look elsewhere. Um, the other thing I've, I'm not very happy with, I'll show you in a minute, you've got the, the faces for the radio bits and stuff underneath the, um, underneath the table here. They're all too big, they're all, they're all bigger than the actual size of the bloody box it's going on. And even on this one here, uh, there's a box here that goes on the navigator's table. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. So you fold up this box, okay, um, what did I tell you to do here, 57, you fold up this box here and then you see that's the front of it, we, they're giving you the box to make up and even then it's too big, so it's just, I don't know, it's just rushed I guess, I don't know, but um, yeah I, would, I wouldn't bother with it again. Uh, Edward stuff, I, I, I generally I love it but it just seems, I don't know, I'm not going to say any more than that. Um, so going forward, we've got the rudder pedals done. I've got all these faces in here glued on. They're all glued inside the fuselage. You'll see those in a minute. You've got those little little pieces there that go on that panel there for the, they suggest to the side of the cockpit. And then we've got the actual instrument panel itself, got the compass. These two knobs that go on a bit of wire, I haven't bothered with them. They're just going to get shaken off. We've got all the uh, map pockets, as you know, they're down in there. Got all the levers on and everything, which you can't even see. As I said, I don't know if you can make them out at all, but... They are on there, you can see them in the middle of there sticking out. They are on there, but um, nah. Um, in hindsight, I would have left the plastic ones on there. Um, so that's that. All this here is all the H2S stuff, which we don't need. So I haven't bothered with any of that. As you know, the one box, which is the, I believe, the fish pond here, which is this one, that is now mounted onto the end of the table. And you can see it there. With the frame underneath it but as you can see as we said all along you can't really see any of it it's all sort of hidden away in the fuselage and as you look down in there you can't really see anything so um you know um somebody did point out that you'll see the radios through the navigator's window sorry through the radio operator's window and i think he was right you can just make out something in there you can with the naked eye anyway if you get the light in there so worth putting those faces on those radios um and that's about it really, obviously not bothering with this because we're not using it. We've got a little radio on the back of there, I'm not bothering with this, this is the winch for the antenna, for the towed antenna, not bothering with that. I'll put that on just before we put the canopy on, that's the um, DF loop that's going to go here, 
Okay, but we've got to scribe that and um, rivet in everything first. Um, and then we've got these details here which are going to go inside the canopy, which I don't know if I'll bother with or not. We shall see. So um, that's pretty much done for the uh, for the uh, cockpit set. Now going back to the normal instructions, um, as you can see here, we've got all these bits and pieces all being glued together. We've got, got to assemble all this now. A lot of this has already gone in and been painted. Um, we've got this here, which has all got to go in. A lot of this is already done. You can see this area here at the back, that's all been made up. That's there. Um, and then going over the page, we've got to put all the glazing in. We've got the doors in there done. We've got the, the railing to go in. Um, we've got the flare chute there. So basically, all, is that a flare chute or is that for the, um, what they call it, silver strips? I can't think what they call them now. But we've got all the radio gear in there, that's gone in. I've used the plastic bomb site mount for fear of it being fragile and getting broken off on the uh, photo etch one. But basically we're sort of ready, we're, we're at this stage now, we're going to put the glazing in. But before that I want to do some touch-ups because I want to show you that basically when you get these photo etch sets, um, if we take the fuselage apart, one of the things that really annoys me with these photo etch sets, and they can't help it, this is not a dig at Edward, this is basically, you're going to get this with any coloured photo etch you're going to get. There's two big bugbears. We, me, for one, me, sorry, for me, the one big bugbear is um, colour match. They generally don't get the colour match right. If you look at uh, the German interiors and stuff, they're generally sort of RLM 66, is it? Um, <clears throat> so the, the manufacturers make it this grey colour and it never seems to match. But... You can't really have a go at them because if you look at if you look at RLM 66 in all the different manufacturers' paints, they're all a different colour. So how can they be correct? You know. Um, so here we can see inside here we've got a radio. Again, we've got these bulbous great radio uh, dial faces on there. But the thing that annoys me with them when you look at the edges because because you've got to sand the nibs off the edge, you always get this glossy shiny edge. On there so we're going to get rid of that with some black paint same around the edge of the instrument panel you're not going to see that but we will, we'll just give it a go anyway I might put some paint on those levers and stuff I'll have to do that off camera because I need to do that under my magnifier I'm about to get a new magnifier actually I've been using this old thing my, my ring one actually broke um, and I've been in touch now with a company that makes them and I'm hoping to get a nice new LED magnifier that I may be able to get the camera because it's got a big lens on it. Maybe I'll get the camera look through it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I can't get on with the head 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 worn magnifiers. So there we go. So I've got to do the edges of this photo etch. So all I'm going to do is take an upturn Tamiya jar. I've got my Viejo Model Air Black here, which is um, 71057. I wouldn't be without this. Just going to put a dob down there. One thing to remember is when you do this, if you wipe the top off, because otherwise what you end up with is a great thick lump of black paint on the end of there. And um, quite often it sort of dries off and just makes a mess. So I think what I'll do is use my tiny brush. I've got a tiny little brush here. This is a um, anise brush powered by Calibri. And it's a, uh, what size is it? A 5 -0. So basically I can come around the edge of all this photo etch now. And just literally just touch the edges in with some black paint and get rid of that shiny edge which is a pain it looks horrible okay so we can get that done now so that's that done there okay we've got down here there's a little bit as well in here I want to just get that's in that box that goes in the nose area Sorry, I glued all this on off camera. I saw no point in um, in having you watch me do all that because we've you, we've all seen me gluing parts on. Um, this one here, you can see I've sanded. I've got some glue spilt, so I sanded quite a lot away. So I'm going to paint all the way around this one, so it's all the same colour. But at the same time, I'll push the paint up onto the edge of the photo etch to get rid of that glossy, shiny metal. And the bigger the scale goes, the more important this is. You know, if you're doing like a 24th scale Hellcat or something with the photo etching there, you want to make sure you, you're getting all those edges covered up because they just look awful. Okay, so there's that done. Just um, <clears throat> you can hear I've still got my cold. The voice is still 
very very croaky I'm not gonna be able to film for very long because I'm not gonna be able to keep talking um yay I hear you say so uh, there we go um quick brush over the top of there uh, Lancaster from Border Models latest news um I don't know what I have told you or what I haven't. I've been in touch with them. We've seen the parts, the Astrodome and the armour plate that goes behind the Navigator in their CAD images is modelled as solid grey. Uh, I've been in touch with them and they've confirmed that those parts will actually be clear in the kit. So that's good. Um, I feared that because of, if you've seen, I've done that ME109 or BF109. And you'll see in there that the um, the uh, wingtip lights and the well, wingtip lenses, should I say, and the uh, gun aiming stuff has all been done in grey plastic. So that was what raised my fears there. So uh, I've also asked them if they're ready to send me one yet, and they've said basically in too many words, not quite. So apparently they're working like mad to get to get them out so and apparently they've almost sold their first allocation so here we go so just get rid of those shiny metal edges on there we'll go around the edge of here I don't think it matters and basically when I do these instrument panels all I do is hold them together and run super glue around the edge and go all around all the way 360 degrees all the way around and let the uh, glue let the super glue wick in. Don't use too much. You don't want it going over your lenses and everything. There we go. And I'll just go across that bottom edge just in case we can see some of it when we look in. There we go. I'll go around the edge of that compass as well, I think. You know, just having bits of shiny metal on edges and stuff, it just doesn't look right. So there we are, that's that done. Um, as I say, I'll go around those knobs with a magnifier. In fact, I'll do that now. Okay, so pressing on. Um, I glued this side panel in here. If you remember, I did the wood grain on there. I've um, I've done the um, hairspray on it and chipped it and stuff. I glued that in place and then realised I needed to put this part in place here. I need to get in those bits. So I went to remove this and it snapped in half. So be careful, the plastic is very brittle um so basically we can see that's all done now and all painted up ready to get the seat in uh I'll just loosely put the seat in so you can see what it looks like i'm not going to put the seat in right now because i want to get the harness done first um, and i haven't decided yet what i'm going to do i've got a couple of choices with harnesses basically the seat's going to sit in there like that what's happening here the seat is pushing that over i think isn't it Oh dear. It looks like the seat is actually pushing that over. So I need to, there's a big lug on the side of there. I'm going to lob that off and I'll lob that one off as well. <coughs> See if that makes things a bit better. I know it's nothing to do with what I've done with this razor platform because the holes actually line up there we go so that got in nice and tight now so that's how that's all gonna look with the seat and everything you can see we've got the chip floor you can see if we turn it around we've got our navigators uh, sorry our um, engineers panel there we've got the navigators area here we've got the radio operators there which you're never gonna see you're not gonna see any of it so um you know, if you haven't, if you're putting this radio in like this, like I've got here, don't worry about painting the face and everything, because once it's in there, you're not going to see any of it. So, yeah. So there we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the harness on the seat before I put. I mean, I could put the seat in after I've put it in the fuselage, to be honest. Uh, in fact, that wouldn't be a bad idea because it'll save it getting knocked. But I put this panel in the side here. So what I want to do now, if you notice, it's all got a bit of a sheen to it, and I don't like that. I want to dull it down. So what I'm going to do is actually try and keep the, the, the varnish away from the instrument panel. But I'm going to give everything a flat coat and dull it down um, because I don't want it to have any sheen whatsoever. 
Uh, I've put, fitted this railing in here. I've left it black. I've painted it black. Um, modern lengths are yellow. That's a modern thing. Um, previous lengths, they were green or they were black. I think the first lengths of Manchester's that were built had a green nose. Uh, so then that would have been painted green as well. And then they painted them black after a while because according to some bomb aimers, um, if they got caught in the spotlights there, their little area they live in, in the nose there, got um, lit up like a bloody, uh, like a circus apparently. So, here we go. So that's got to sit in there like that. That's got to go in, in the back like that. There we go. So that all still fits. And then, that's going to go... To there like so and hopefully squeeze everything in between there we go so you can see there again like I say when you look down in there you can't see the front face of this radio down in here at all so um, there we are but it all needs a doll down so we're gonna let that Viejo paint on there dry and then I'll give it a doll down with a flat coat and then we'll do some um, dry brushing and perhaps a bit of chipping or something but uh, I think we'll leave it like that for now. But then we've got a basically, you know, we've got some colours going on in there. A little bit of busyness. Something to look at through the canopy. Um, I'm not sure. I'll just grab some tape. If I can get this off here and hold it together at the same time. Oh, come on. <laughs> come here. Oops. Let's grab some tape. I'm going to grab the canopy. Oh, bloody Tammy dispensers. They're a crap design. They really are. Right. Okay, so that's all clipped together now. Just put a bit of tape on there. Just hold that and a bit down there, just hold that. Then I can grab the canopy and we'll see what it's going to look like. Okay, so I'm going to put some tape. Okay, so straight away here we can see we've got an issue. The instrument panel is keeping the fuselage apart. Now, it may be that it's slightly too far forward. It may be that it's slightly too far back. But it's actually holding our fuselage apart. So I need to get another magnifier and see what's going on. Okay, so I've improved things. As you can see here, we've still got a bit of a gap going on here. Now what I've done <clears throat> is something quite common actually with Edward Photo Etch. Because you're adding metal onto the front of the instrument panel, you're actually making the instrument panel thicker. So if there's a, a groove that has to sit in in here, it needs to be widened. And as you can see, if I use these tweezers, you can see in here, you've got this ridge coming along and you've got this vertical ridge here where the instrument panel sits against there, but then that there needs to be cut away. Like I've cut it away there. So I've just cut some of that ridge away and that makes it wider. Um, <clears throat> now also, I've noticed I've done the same on both sides, but I've still got a bit of a gap there. So what I'm going to do is come along with a fairly coarse sanding stick and just literally remove material here from the sides. We don't need to go all the way up over the top. And it's, it's a tiny gap we got now, so you don't need to remove too much. But 
you can see on there how much the you know the two layers of brass have made the instrument panel that much thicker. So I think that should do it. In fact, I may actually remove. No, we should be okay. Just thinking maybe I should remove some more plastic from in here. But um, I'll have to touch that up with a black black paintbrush or hairy stick. In fact, I will remove some more because I removed more on that other side. So get in here, just come with this round blade. This is number 10 blade, number 10 is one more. And just make a slice in it. Just like so. And then come in from the side and cut it away. Just like that. It's very difficult to get in there. I wish I'd thought of this before it was painted and then I could have done it before it was painted, but you know, it won't be anything to get in there and touch that up. So we'll put this in here. I hate fitting this into this fuselage. If you can tell, I'm actually losing a bit of love for this model because it's not, um, it's not going together as well as I had hoped. Let's just put it that way. You've got these tiny little pins in the side of the Bombay roof that go into lugs in the side of the fuselage and they're like half a millimetre long so the first opportunity they get they just pop out. And, ugh. Once the fuselage is closed up I'm sure everything will be fine. But um, Right, so let's just check that we've got the, it's these little pins, you need to check, the, check they're in the holes in the fuselage. As you can see now, we can close that up now and get rid of the gap. So there we go. So I've sanded off, taken some material, and all I've done there is with the back of the tweezers, just make sure that the instrument panel is pushed forward as far as it'll go into those lugs. And what I'm going to do now is take this up and leave that instrument panel to set in that position. Because the glue on the mounting where it's mounted into the cockpit floor, the glue there is still a little uh, soft so it can sort itself out now and dry in that position and then I won't have to start messing around with it afterwards. You can see you've got these tiny little holes in here that the Bombay roof has to go into and it's, oh, come on. It goes in one side and then it falls out the other. You can see here for some reason it just doesn't want to go together it's because it's overlapped back here. Oh, it's come out of both sides now. Can't wait to get this glued together and then that'll be it then. So there we are, I'm going to put another bit on there I think. There we go. So that's that there, you can see we've got no gap there now, dash panels in, everything's all nice and tight, so we're done. I'll have to put those pieces in there after, after it's glued together. But uh, before we do that I want to get a matte coat in there, get it all dulled, dulled, dulled down, get a wash, some um, chip in whatever do a bit more work on it and then uh, and then we'll be done but the objects here we're going to see how the canopy what we're going to see through the canopy won't we remember this is my custom canopy that i made so let's see how that looks so as you can see even before it's fully polished you can see when you look down in there you can still see quite a lot in there you can see the instrument panel The instrument panel in there. But, um, you can't see anything back there at all, so I wouldn't belly ache over that if I were you. But there we go. So there's the custom canopy if you want to see that again. And there we are. So I'm going to leave that to dry now. So be a couple of seconds for you and 24 hours for me. Okay, so about an hour later now, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I'm going to get on with something else so I can get a get a video out for you guys so 
basically looking through the instructions next thing we've got to do in here is add all the interior detail which we've already done and add the glazing um, got the rear little shutter doors there to go in uh, all the detail here in the front which is all gone in already all that's gone in um, door there glazing is yet to go in so uh, and then we're going to basically put the interior in close the fuselage halves up and that's it so next thing is move on to the turret so we've got the front turret here we've got the upper turret here and we've got the rear turret here now what's very nice here what they've done which is fair play to them thank you very much they've gone in and um they've basically made all the parts they're all l so we've got the l sprue here and pretty much everything that's coming out of this nose turret is on the l sprue except for obviously the clear part here and we've got the rear of the turret there now i don't know why they've done that um clear because the back of the turret isn't clear as far as i remember but uh anyway so um i'll have to do some uh, check my references but basically we've got all the parts on here the guns they are very nice indeed looking at them closely you can see them here on the sprue they've got the um the correct oval uh, holes with the cooler jackets and everything i have actually got some resin gun barrels but i don't really see the point in using them because they're probably just going to droop i'd imagine the plastic would be more stable uh the resin gun barrels would just snap the only beauty using the resin is we probably haven't got a seam to deal with um so these are very nice they're going to be they're a lot nicer than the the Tamiya barrels that you get in that kit. Uh, if anything, I would replace them with brass. So I think what I'm going to do is build the turrets up without the glazing. Obviously, it'll be built up without the glazing, and then they can paint them and paint the seat cushions and everything. Uh, I'm not sure about harnesses. I'm not sure if they'd have had harnesses in them or not. That's another thing I'll have to check my references. Hong Kong models seem to like putting harnesses everywhere, uh, and I'm not sure that it's correct. So um, I think what we'll do is build these turrets up without the glazing, and then... If I want to then, if I want to go and buy some master barrels, I can and just drill them out while they're actually fitted in there. So uh, let me get these parts off the sprue and see how it all goes together. I know one of the issues with the 30 second scale kit is the way you build this all up, you end up with it fixed and you can't move the, you can't move the guns up and down at all. I don't want to be able to play with it, but it is handy to be able to move them for painting and stuff. So um, let's have a look. As I say, I'll get the parts off the sprue and we'll go from there. Okay, so all the parts are cleaned up now, ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is get the guns. I've actually drilled the, I don't know if you can see it on there, I've drilled the end of the barrels out. So they look a lot better now. Um, as I say, maybe I'll be replacing them. I'll probably just snap them off anyway. So basically we've got the gun carrier here and the guns have tabs on them and the tabs go into those slots. But as we can see, they're way too wide. So I need to come down the side of that tab and just remove some plastic without cutting myself maybe better to um scrape it rather than cut it let's have another go it's just going to remove some material from the side of that tab just to thin it out it seems to be a bit of a theme with this kit. There's no, there's no tolerance that's going in there now. There is like no tolerance. So it's like the engineers that have done this kit have done um. On this one, I'm going to remove from the other side. What they've done if they've got a one millimeter wide slot, they've made the peg that goes in it one millimeter wide. Well, as you know, if you if you're an engineer. Well, it's common sense. A one millimeter wide slot, a one millimeter wide peg isn't going to fit in it, especially when you consider shrinkage and stuff after the molding. So, basically, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a one inch perfectly round one inch diameter hole and you've got a perfectly round one inch diameter bar, they will not go together. The bar needs to be at least sort of three or four microns below to fit in, um, and perfectly round. We're just looking at this. So these guns go in this way. So that one's going to go in there. I'm going to take some of the extra thin quick setting, basically for speed. Let's just put a drop in there. That'll hold that gun in place. And then we can turn this over. This is all going to get very fiddly. I'm going to put a drop of glue in there before I start. And then put that gun in there. 
we go and then we'll just let that just gel off. In fact, I'm going to grab my clampy tweezers. Come here. I'm going to grab my clampy tweezers. Hold that in there. In fact, I'll turn that around and hold it that way. So then we can make sure that everything's nice and parallel, square, all lined up. We don't want to be having to bend anything around afterwards because we'll probably snap the barrels off. As you can see there with the quick setting, it's drying very, very quickly. Checking they're parallel that way when I look down. Checking they're parallel that way. And just make sure they're nice and straight, really. And they're at 90 degrees to the mounting. So we can use our model board to check for that. So we can put the mounting 90 degrees. There we go. So I think that one needs to be turned in a bit. And there we are. So happy with that. Right, so we can leave that there. Now the next step, we've done that, the next step of the instructions is to add this part here, L8, and it doesn't really show you how it goes at all. Uh, it's going to go into the side of there. So if we take L39, which is this one, okay, then that peg there is going into there so again with this one we can't tilt the guns so that square peg there is going to go into there and then we've got this part here which is L8 is going to go over the top of the guns and go into that hole there as you can see the instructions aren't very clear at all so that's going to go into there so, I think mean, we're going to have to have the glens fixed because this doesn't pivot. Um, because what's going to happen if I pivot the guns and this is supposed to be sat on top of them, they're not going to move. So I think we'll have to have the guns fixed as per the instructions. So I'm guessing that's going to go in there and we're probably fine. I wish now I checked this before I started. We're probably going to find that this won't go in that hole. Oh no, it fits in there, lovely. Okay, so that fits in there. So I'll just put a tiny drop of glue in there just to nip it into place. So it's not all flopping about it. And then this is going to go into that hole there and pivot up over the top. Okay, so it wants to slide in there first and then go in there. Blimey, I mean, this is all fiddly and falling apart. And there we go. Okay, and then just pull these guns around straight. Then we're going to fit the the seat. It's going to go in there, and then this side is going to go on. We've got to line all three of those holes up. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll grab that in those tweezers. Makes it a lot easier to hold. So we've got one, two, three four pins to light up. This is going to be fun. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put some glue in that hole there. Put some in there as well. <clears throat> My voice is really croaky. Okay, so those two have gone in. So we'll just grab that seat and pull it back up. Okay, 
If you're new to the hobby guys and you're doing one of these, just take your time. Don't lose your rag with it. And you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm just giving it a squeeze together because for some reason it's not quite going together. Okay, I don't think that square peg has gone into that hole, so I'm going to manipulate that and just move it back. There we go. It feels like it's gone in now. And then that piece on the top there will go in. God blimey. Into there. I don't know if I've got that piece on backwards. This is the thing you see, this is where these modern kits fall over. Yeah, I've got it on backwards. It's very, very difficult to see which way round things go. You know, you can imagine if it's a Tamiya kit, there would be a little picture off to the side, attention, you know, this fits this way and blah, blah, blah. I've used this quick set, quick setting cement, so it's all pretty much glued. So, so this goes in. These little lugs on the back face away from the gun barrels. I had it the wrong way round. So what I'm going to do is pull that off of there. And we'll start again. So we'll put some glue in there. We'll put a drop of glue up in there, and then this piece is going to go in with those two little legs. Pointing backwards. Okay, and then this side. It's just going to drop on here. And then we can slide it around until that peg lines up. So that's lined up in there, that's lined up in there. Bloody hell. And then the seat can come back and go in there. Just like so. Oh, come on. And there we are. I think that's it. It's all gone together. I'm just going to turn the camera off and check under my magnifier and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, happy with that. Um, just one thing I've noticed. If you look at this closely, you will see that the, the gun barrel's coming out here. You've got this round part here. If you wanted the guns to move, you would have to actually separate that from that. So, a bit of a crap design, really. I wish they'd had it so the guns moved. As I say, not so you can play with them, but just so you can paint everything. Um, so, anyway, that's that, <clears throat> that's that done now. As I say, I'm not worrying about seat belts. I'm not overly concerned about seat belts. So, this is going to now go into the base. So we take that assembly there and that's going to drop down into that base. So that's going to go that way round and this is all going to fall down in through here. And the ammo boxes will hang out of the bottom. So that's just going to press in like that. So we're just going to put a drop of glue in there to make sure it all stays nice and square. I'll tell you, I'm going to put a drop of glue in those slots because I know that I've got a piece dropping in there now. And then we can just give those a nudge. Make sure they stay down. That's got it all squared up. I'd suggest doing this before that the assembly I've just done dries. And then we've got this piece going on the top here. 
and that's going to go in with the legs pointing forward. So this is the inner frame for the um, for the front turret. That's going to drop in there like so. Okay, and it's going to go onto those brackets there. So drop a glue on there, drop a glue on there. Drop a glue in there and then we'll give it all a bit of a push together. It's all quite tight. It's all um, which is not a bad thing. It's, I'd rather have it a bit tight and sand a bit off than have it all flopping around like a turd in a top hat. There we go. So that's our nose turret done. That's going to sit in there like that somehow. So there we are, we can see our nose turret is in. Again, check the guns for alignment, check them nice and straight. And as I say, what we'll do is if we don't like them, we break any off, we can just go in there, drill them out, and then we can fit some master barrels. And as I say, I'm not going to be fitting glazing at this point because I need to paint it so these are going to be painted all black and then dry brushed with some metallics and maybe pick out some details or something if I can but um perhaps do the seat cushion as well the seat would basically hang down vertically so make sure we've got it hanging down right so there we go that's our that's our forward turret done. So just got to do the same with the other two now. Right, so we've got the, the nose turret done as you can see there. We've got the dorsal turret done there. Um, you've got the little on there you can see, where are we, come here camera. You can see we've got the little uh, nubbins on the bottom there and they ride over the, the fairing to stop the gunner from shooting his own aircraft. Um, so basically they're all there, so that's a good bit of detail. Unfortunately, again, the guns are solid, you can't move them. Um, so, and I've drawn out the barrels, I don't know if you can see on there. Draw out the end of the barrels as well, so they look a lot nicer. Um, basically, now I'm going to do the rear turret, and I thought I'd video this because it looks like extra complicated. We've got a couple of photo etched parts going in, so I've got the seat belts, which I'm ignoring. Um, and then we've got the chutes here which go in the back and I'm going to fit them in before I fit the clear part. Oh, actually I can't because there's framework around the bottom. So I can't fit those yet. I'm glad I noticed that. Uh, so they're going to have to go in afterwards. I was, I'll have to put them in with some white glue. I was worried about fogging up the clear plastic. So if you know this, if you're new to the hobby, if you've got clear plastic in an enclosed area, um, don't use super glue because it will fog it up and it fogs it up on the inside. So that's sort of really ruins your day. Uh, if it's sort of in an open area, like if it's here, if you glue in this panel into the here, you're absolutely fine as long as you keep plenty of air around it. But if you actually close up, it's how they used to find fingerprints and stuff. Um, so anyway, um, so I'll get all this put together. So we've got the, the actual gun barrels going into here. Again, not at all clear. If I show you in here, you've got the side. This is, a, this is one of the sides. We've got the two holes there. And then you've got a couple of little flats in the back and then the guns go in and there is no real positive location for them they just sort of go in and and sit there so I'm assuming they go in so that this lug on here the lug on the gun this is also small the lug on the gun is going to sit up against that ledge in there but you know I say if this was Tamiya there would be a cutaway drawing and it would show you you know fit the gun like this so um, this is one of the problems with uh, with HK models, their instructions. I've actually been working, as I said, on that B-17, the 32nd scale one, and it's bloody ridiculous, the instructions. In fact, I'll show you, I've got the instructions here. It's absolutely ridiculous. Be warned if you're looking at buying this kit. You've got this instructional manual here, which is like huge. It's almost A3 size. Okay, so you go inside and you've got all your bits and pieces. Get your sprue call outs and stuff, yeah? And then when you get to the to the belly turret, I mean, look at this here. Look at this for the rear gun. I mean, there's my hand. Look how small it all is. It's absolutely tiny. Um, and it's the same when you get to the belly turret. It's 
Um, you know, there's the, there's the dorsal turret there. It's not so bad, that's not so small. But then when you get to the belly turret, where is it? Do, 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 do. I've missed it, it's section 43. Here we go, ball turret here. Look at it. And then when you get to the to the tail gunner, um, here, I mean, look at how small this is. Look at it. I just showed you that, didn't I? Look how tiny all this is. It's absolutely ridiculous. You know, it could have been five times the size. You've got this huge, great manual with tiny, tiny drawings in it. So, uh, yeah. And uh, this one's a bit better because you've got the CAD images, but um, I don't know. I suppose they're a fairly new company, so we have to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I'm just going to put some glue, a bit of swarf in there. I'm going to put some glue on there, and hopefully the gun will pick up on that. It's upside down at the moment. So we'll flip it over. And then we'll put some in here. This is not at all easy. It's as you can see, there is no positive location. It's just if I squeeze them into the sides, you can see what happens. The barrels cross over because there's no. I guess I'll have to do. I'll do the other side now at the same time, and I can get them all lined up. I'm guessing they're not supposed to glue onto the sides, they're only supposed to glue onto the bottom, so there we go. And then we'll drop that one in there. Put some glue on the bottom. Oh dear dear. Okay, so they're lined up in the two planes. So basically when you put it down flat like that, it should be, if you put it against the straight edge of like that, your gun should be parallel with your straight edge. So we get it like that, then they're going to be parallel. So we're going to try and get this all glued together pretty quickly if we can. So we've now got, oh bloody hell. Got this part here going on to this part here, L19 to L20. I see they're telling you to put the photo etch parts on here as well now. Don't do that until you've got it on there because they need to sit flat on the base if you look. So if you get them slightly out they won't sit flat. So we've got L19 and L20 to go together. So that's these two here. Okay, if the gun's set up I'll have to put some more extra thin on them and let them... Um, let the extra thin penetrate the joints again. And then it's telling us to put this into the base and it's going to go do, 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 do that way round with the legs sticking forward. So that's just going to sit in there. I'm using quick setting because it dries so fast and it's great for assemblies like this because it's very hot. It's hotter than the Tammy Extra Thin. Um, but basically it's... Um, it bites fast, so if you if you use like something like extra thin or something, this is all just floppy and you can't hold it. So we've got L46 and L45. So they're going to go in and sit in. Where do they sit in? Oh, there's a peg on there which I've actually cut off because I thought it was a sprue nib. What a knife! We put the other side on first. That's going to go in there like that. Put some glue on there, that capillary in. There we go. And then I'm going to put a drop of glue on here. 
and then fit that one the same so it's parallel with it. As I say, I cut the nib I thought it was a sprue nib. That's another thing Hong Kong models do a lot. They tend to um, they put their sprue nibs on the end of a pin. So you kind of cut it off and sand it all back and then realise that it was actually supposed to be there. You just cut it all off. So there we go. So it's that like that. Guessing that's how it goes. I'm guessing that's going to be good enough. Right, and then we've got this gun mount. It's going to sit in those grooves. Looks like I've left a bit of a sprue nib on there, so we'll just sand that off. There we go. And then we can slip that into there. It's just going to sit down in those grooves, like so. Put some extra thin in there, let it all capillary around. It looks like I've got a piece here, this L37. It's got to go in that way around. Oops. It's got to go with the lug pointing down by the look of it. That's got to slip in there. Put some glue on one side that should hold it in place. And then I can position the other side. Oh dear, it's all falling about. Tell you what, let's take it apart and just spread it a bit and make it make it a bit springy in there. It's totally unclear in the drawing, the instructions which way up it goes. So that's going to go in there like that. And that's going to go in there. Like that. There you go, that's 12 o'clock. You'll hear the 12 chimes on the clock. So that's midnight. That's thin in there. Right now, I'll put this glue on the other side. It seems like I'm rushing. I am because I want to get this these in and check that the barrels all aligned and everything. Nothing worse than having the barrels all on the on the piss or skew with, should I say, not on the piss. This is a family show. Right. I can look at that and I can see that these are a little bit. So just change the angle on them. And then looking down from the top, we can see that that one. That one needs to go in like so. As does that one. I'll tell you what guys, this is crap. I don't know what it is with HK and their guns. On the 30 second scale kits they've got, well certainly on the um, B25 and the B17, I haven't looked at the Lancaster. They've got all different breech lengths and different barrel lengths when all the guns should obviously be the same. And then this they've got no positive location but at least all the guns are the same. And I have heard somebody's contacted me recently to talk about the HK models B17 and apparently the HK models B17 in 48 scale has got the same fat fuselage as the 32nd scale has got so they learn nothing from the uh, 
from the advice given there. So here we are. And I'm just going to put a drop more cement in them just to lock them in. Because if I do have to drill them out and fit brass barrels, the last thing I want is for them to be pushed off. As you can see, the way they fit, there's just no positive location or anything on these. Okay, so they're, they're done. Right, so now these outer legs will fit on. So what I'm going to do is just take my knife and put some score lines in that and that will actually help help it to glue into place. So we've got a semicircular nubbin on the side of the plastic part and then we've got a semicircular slot in the photo etch part. So I've got some thin photo etch here. So I can run that on there. <coughs> and that should run in behind. <coughs> My voice is going. Yay, they say. And now I want to make sure that that is sat. on that base away from the flange where the clear part's got to go. There we go, that's up on there. So I'm going to put some thin CA down there just to help lock the base into place. We can look at a magnifier and make sure that it is actually off of that edge. Yes it is, otherwise when we glue the canopy, the glue will capillary up the side of that brass piece and it'll look awful. So I'm going to scrape up inside of that. Place that down on there, get some glue in behind. And then we can see that the bottom is correctly positioned, so we just put some thin CA in there, let it capillary around into all its joints, do its thing. Again, look in the magnifier, make sure it's off of that edge. There we go, that's that done. Obviously the shoots are going to go in, some like that, but I can't fit them yet because um, because obviously you've got to get the clear part over the top. So there we are. Let's just get some more in here around there because there's one thing, I, one thing I don't like about photo etch parts is they can ping off because of all the, um, because of the super glue. And you can guarantee the ones that are just stuck to the outside that you can glue back on won't ping off. It'll be the ones like this that are inside a turret. So we can just take our knife now and scrape away any excess glue that's on there while it's still rubbery. There we go. So that is our rear turret made up. All the guns are nice and parallel. Sort of. Do anyway. So there we are. That's those done. And I'm going to put those two little shoots in my box with my little bits and pieces. And we'll call that a day for tonight. That's, uh, today is uh, Sunday the 28th. Well, it's actually Monday the 29th now because it's just gone midnight. So there we are. That's our, that's our rear turret done. It's all very nicely detailed. So what I'll do now is I'll get these primed up and painted. Um, what I'll probably do is um, prime them with some 
um, black or maybe some grey and then I'll paint them with some coal black so it's just off black and then we'll give them a dry brush with some uh, some I don't know some darker some dark grey or whatever and then we'll, we'll do something with the breeches and stuff just to get them sort of looking a bit gun like and then we'll get the uh, we get the cure part song, get the masked up, paint them and they'll be ready to go on. We'll, we'll leave them right until the end because I think we can actually fit the guns right at the end. Yeah, so what we're doing here... You see now, this is a bit strange. Here we go, this is where you get some of these issues with HK. <coughs> They're showing you in the instructions here. We're fitting in this backing piece here which closes off the fuselage, great, and then we're going to fit the nose turret in and you've got that fairing there in, in already in position and then the next part of the instruction shows you fitting it, so obviously the, that's going to hold the turret in, so you can't put that on until you've got the turret in, so that's going to be a bit difficult, so uh, we will look at that when we come to it. So there we go guys, we'll call that a day for today, that has been part 8. Uh, what's that been? It's nearly an hour long. It's 59 minutes at the moment. So um, thanks for watching. As I say, I'll get this all um, apart and flat coated and stuff. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see me doing more. I, mean, I can just carry on and do all this painting and that off camera. Uh, do the flat coating and that off camera. Maybe even do the weathering off camera. But if you'd like to see me doing more, I know that some people say I show too much. Some people say they want to see more. They don't see everything. Let me know in the comments below. If you want me to just go on and get this done, then I will do. If you want to see it all filmed, then I will do. And obviously, the majority wins. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon, guys. Bye for now.